Hello, everyone, and welcome to the podcast. This is Jill. Have you ever wondered what Rudolph the Red-Nosed Reindeer can teach us about life? That's what we'll talk about today. Hey, what do you say, both of us be independent together? Rudolph the Red-Nosed Reindeer. Today, we're going to talk about the children's classic, Rudolph the Red-Nosed Reindeer. It is something that in the United States is a mainstay of Christmas time. Are there ways that we can learn to live better through this TV show? This show was created in 1964, and all the puppets that were used cost about $5,000. It was a very inexpensive way of doing animation. And the story itself is really quite simple. The fellow who narrates the main character in the story, which is a snowman, is Burl Ives, who was just the most wonderful voice at that time. The interesting thing is that Rudolph the Red-Nosed Reindeer was created for a department store called Montgomery Wards in 1939 and was part of an advertising campaign. Then, in 1964, it became a children's classic. So what can we learn about this particular show? The show is really about what actually matters to us beyond what other people think is normal. It all starts out with the reindeer couple having a baby, and the baby has a red nose, and the parents are quite horrified about this. How is he ever going to be on Santa's reindeer team if he has this horrible red glowing nose? So the father tries in every way possible to teach his son to be normal, tries to cover up the nose, tries to make sure that nobody finds out that Rudolph is different. Then there's a parallel story of an elf called Hermie, and he does not want to be an elf. He doesn't want to make toys. He wants to be a dentist. He spends all his time studying to be a dentist. His boss, who is a part of the elves, that he has to give up his goal of being a dentist and start focusing on his job, which is making toys. So Hermie gets a great idea that maybe what he can do is actually work on teeth for toys. He's trying to smoosh what he loves doing, dentistry, in with the job he has, toy making. And his boss was just not going to hear anything about it. His boss didn't care about him trying to achieve his goals. And the first messages that start coming out for Hermie that it's more important to have self-respect and do well in your job, even if you don't like your job, than it is to be comfortable in your life. That is just the initial message. So at first, Rudolph goes to school. All the education when it comes to flying for reindeer was an educational game. That's pretty good for 1964. They were trying to use fun methods to teach the reindeer how to fly. While the coach was being very complimentary of him and another girl reindeer was being awfully complimentary to him, the other reindeer were not being very nice to him. And when the red nose comes out because the covering falls off, he gets kicked out of school. They don't want Rudolph to be different. They don't want him to be stranger than the other reindeer that are there. So then Rudolph meets up with Hermie, the wannabe dentist. And Hermie just says, well, I guess I'm just going to have to get the things I want in my life through being independent. And Rudolph agrees with this and says, let's be independent together. And I thought that was just so wonderful because a lot of times when we think that we're having a struggle, it's just us, it's just our individual problems that we're having. Maybe there's someone out there who's not having the exact problem, the exact situation that you're having, but together you can take your independent problems and work them out. So then they decide that they're going to run away and get away from it all. And then they encountered the Bumble, who is a giant snow monster. And he threatens their lives. And they meet a prospector, Yukon Cornelius, who's always looking for different things. Gold, silver, tinsel. But he too is out in the storm of the North Pole looking for the things that he's looking for. So he takes Rudolph and Hermie along with him. And as they're each looking for the answers to their lies, a terrible storm comes up and they end up in the land of misfit toys. 
in this animation, the misfit toys are just toys that didn't quite end up correctly. And so they end up getting put into this other place where they can just live out the rest of their lives. But the leader of the misfit toys says that these toys want to be loved. They want to be in the hands of children. And they're hoping that these new people who visit them can help them get there. So they promise that if they do get back to the North Pole, they'll tell Santa all about the misfit toys. I have to tell you the truth. When I first saw this as a kid, I wanted the misfit toys. The regular toys are boring, but these were a bird who swims, a cowboy who rides an ostrich, and a polka dotted elephant. I mean, how is all of that not better? So I felt bad for the misfit toys because I wanted to have toys that were more like them. But at some point, Rudolph realizes that he has to leave his friends. Because of his glowing nose, it always attracts the bumble monster to them because he can see it from so far away. So he leaves and he leaves his friends behind. And at one point, the story says that he decided to go home because he could not run away from his problems. And so he does go home and eventually, as you can imagine, gets apologies, gets accepted, and of course, saves the day because Santa can use his bright, shiny nose to help him get through the horrible blizzard that came upon them. Christmas was almost lost, except for Rudolph. Hermie also shows up back at home, and his boss admits, too, that he was wrong, that there is room for a dentist inside the elf community. In fact, they probably could use a dentist, and he should be able to become a dentist because he's good at it, he researches it, and the community needs it as well. Comet apologizes to his son Rudolph for making him not feel welcome. And not only that, they go pick up all the misfit toys, find a way to get them to all the kids who would really love them as well. Heck, even the Bumble, the snow monster, was redeemed in the show and given a job that he was uniquely qualified to do. See? Happy endings. And so, to me, This whole story has that idea about how people should figure out how they fit in. I think the interesting thing about the story is that before the 60s, people were told to fit in, that they must fit in. And in the 60s, it was challenging all those ideas that said, aren't there different kinds of people who can fit in in different kinds of ways? And that really made for the world we have today. Because when you look around and you see all these different occupations that exist and all these different ways that you can work and have hobbies and use computers or the gig economy, people being entrepreneurs and starting their own businesses, that all came from this idea that we could take the skills and ideas that are unique to us, learn how to turn them into something that's beneficial to our lives makes us happy, and does great things for the world. And so that nobody is a misfit. Nobody should be made into caricature of what they should be. They should figure out what they're good at, what they love doing, and work hard to get what they really want. Hermie studied dentistry. Rudolph became an amazing flyer with his red nose. And the misfit toys lobbied people to get Santa, to get them out of there and get them into the hands of children. So that's the message of this story. And I think it's wonderful that in 1964, people saw an opportunity to tell kids that they should figure out what they're great at, what they could do for the world and what they could do for themselves. So my challenge to you is come up with one way that you're different from everyone else. That you're not a misfit, you're unique, and you have a unique skill. And think about what you could do with that unique skill that you have to make next year the best year possible for you and the people around you. And now our fun entertainment quote of the week comes from, of course, Rudolph the Red-Nosed Reindeer. Well, poor Rudolph realizes that he can't endanger his friends' lives anymore. And so, that night, 
he decides to strike out on his own. Goodbye, Cornelius. I hope you find lots of tinsel. Goodbye, Hermie. Whatever a dentist is, I hope someday that you're the greatest. Well, time passed slowly. Rudolph existed as best he could. The snow monster kept him on the run. But once in a while, he would stop and make a friend, or two. But it wouldn't last long, and Rudolph would be on his own again. But during all that time, a strange and wonderful thing was happening. Rudolph was growing up. And growing up made Rudolph realize you can't run away from your troubles. And pretty soon he knew where he had to go. Home. That's right. By growing up, Rudolph learned that he can't run away from his problems and he has to face them. And that really is what being an adult is all about. All right, everyone. Have a great week. Merry Christmas to you. And I hope you enjoy this time with whatever way that you decide to celebrate them. Remember, you're not a misfit. You are a unique, special person who needs to figure out what you could do to make the world a better place.